my name is Mrs. Shardle and I'm going to be your art teacher. Let's talk about a few basic how to do school rules before we get started. At this point, most of you know how to do school. Um, a quick recap is when you walk into the art room, come in, have a seat, sit quietly, wait to get started. Um, when somebody's talking, you are not, don't interrupt them, raise your hand, and wait to be called on, don't just raise your hand. If there are materials on the table, please don't touch them or distribute them. You don't know what they are there for, so leave them be. So a few areas in the art room that we do not need to go behind or venture as students include behind the teacher's art desk, the cutting board in the corner of the art room, or behind the kiln table on the side of the art room. The kiln table is there for your protection uh, to keep you from possibly getting burned while the kiln is going. And the cutting board is a teacher tool that students do not need to be around to touch or go near. It is dangerous um, and I do not expect to see anybody touching that at any time. Material safety and use. So the simplest thing to stay safe in the art class is to follow the rules. A few things that you do need to know. Uh, rulers are not toys. They don't need swung. Uh, they aren't lightsabers or magic wands. They aren't swords. They don't need bounced off the table or tapped on the table. They are Rulers are used to measure and draw straight lines. Scissors. When you are carrying scissors from one point to another, it is best to wrap your hand around the actual cutters of the scissors and hold them pointing down. Never carry them with the points facing up, out, or in towards your body in case you were to fall. You never want to slide scissors across the table, or a pencil across the table for that matter, um, just because you don't know who a, could be picking something up off the ground and accidentally get hit in the head with a pair of scissors. Don't slide things across the table unless it's, for example, like an eraser would be fine. When you are using scissors or any kind of blade, you are always to cut away from your body. If you look around the room, you should find the tool rule, which states, I will cut away from myself and never have my hand in the path of a blade, cutter, or any tool that could hurt me. I will follow rules and keep myself and others safe. Uh, the next thing I'd like to talk about is seats. Please don't tip them and make sure you push them in when you aren't sitting in them. When you are sitting in them, sit on your behind, not your knees, not backwards, not straddled, not to the side. Um, pencils. We do not tap them on the table. What that does is it fractures the lead inside the pencil. So um, you have a bunch of broken lead inside the wood. You sharpen it and the tip falls out. So you sharpen it again and the tip falls out. Um, electric sharpeners are not for the colored pencils. It is only for the regular pencils. We have hand cranks for the colored pencils. Often those need to be done over a garbage can as to not make a mess. When it is time to clean up, it is time to clean up. Mark my words. Listen to this. Listen to this. If it is time to clean up, Let's try that again. Listen to this. When it is time to clean up, it is time to clean up. If I have to take a pencil or a crayon or any art supply out of your hand because you refuse to clean up, expect that you will be in retraining the following day every time. I am not asking you to clean up for my health. It is because I need to get you cleaned up, lined up, out the door, and my next class in the door. So, when it is time to clean up, do so. Other things to keep in mind, 
Um, the art classroom is not a place where papers or markers or pencils or erasers need to be thrown through the air. I do not want to see anything thrown in this classroom. You don't go to your homeroom and throw your iPad across the room. You don't go to the cafeteria and throw your lunch across the room. You don't go to the music room and throw a ukulele or a tambourine across the room. So items do not need to be thrown in the art room. I will indeed write you up for that. My trash cans are not basketball hoops. And please do not make paper airplanes. I know you want to fly them once you make them, and I understand that. So to avoid that, just please do not make them. Uh, we don't need to yell across the room. You can talk quietly to the people at your table. Please don't bring toys to the art room that I'm going to have to take from you and play with myself. Um, please do not tell anybody to S up. You know what it is. It's shut up. It's not nice, and we don't like it. Uh, please do not touch other students or their artwork. You are never to draw or write on another person's project, just as though, just like you are not to touch another student. We don't need to be braiding hair or playing thumb wars or arm wrestling or kicking or poking or hitting. Don't touch another student. The last thing to keep in mind is if you come up to me and say, Mr. Shardell, is this good enough? I'm going to tell you no. Because what you're really asking me when you ask, is this good enough? You're asking to quit. You know that it could be better, but you want to give up. I'm not going to give you permission. Go make it as good as you possibly can. All right, fire drills. So what you are going to see happen during a fire drill, the alarm is going to sound and immediately Mr. Shardle is going to tell you to freeze. And I'm going to count up every student that is in the classroom to get a total for how many kids need to make it down and out of the school during a fire drill. I also need to double check that we don't have any students in the bathroom. So after that, um, your assigned line leader for fire drills is going to grab the to-go bag and you're going to line up behind them. I'm going to tell the line leader to go ahead and take you down the stairs right beside the drinking fountains here, past the vending machines, around the school, to the back of the parking lot beside the playground. <laughs> your line leader will then be the caboose and the caboose will be the line leader. The original line leader needs to bring the bag up to the caboose, who is now in front. They will hold either the green or red paper up, indicating that we are good or need to hold for the um, fire drill, and the caboose will lead us back into the building. The caboose also is in charge of turning off the lights and closing the door as we are leaving. So, Mrs. Shardle needs to go across the hall and make sure that there's no children in the restroom when a fire drill happens. So, it is really important that the line leader and the caboose know what they're doing and um, for this to run smoothly. There is absolutely no goofing around, talking, or running during a fire drill. The next important uh, drill we need to discuss is lockdowns. So in the occurrence of a lockdown drill, there are two main doors that need locked. The main art door, which is actually right behind me, and the door between the hallway and the art supply room. There are jam locks on both window ledges of those doors. Both of those are going to need jam locked. All of us students are going to go into the art supply room towards the back of the closet and have a seat in the dark and sit quietly. Mrs. Shardle is going to also lock the door in between the art room and the art supply room. In the case of a real situation, not a drill, I mean, there's actually somebody in the school that means to cause harm to somebody, um, and we needed to exit the school. Lucky us, we have a roof right below 
our art supply room and the art room. So in the occurrence that we would need to exit the school, Mrs. Shardle does have a tool for that that would break out the window. We would, as carefully as possible, jump onto the slanted roof that is right below the art supply room and as carefully as possible, jump from that roof to the ground and run into the woods to hide. Like I said, that is if there was ever a real situation, which I pray there never will be, but I want you to know that there is a plan if something like that does happen. Now, yes, you could hurt yourself jumping from one roof to the ground, but it is much better to have a broken arm than to not be alive to talk about your broken arm. So, those are our drills. Classroom volume in the art room. We are all familiar with the traffic light and what this means. Green is your inside voices. That means that you are talking at a normal level to the people around you. Yellow is the whisper. So if we are too loud on green, then Mrs. Shardle will move us to yellow, which means that we can still talk to our friends, but in a whisper voice. Red light means that we're silent for five minutes. As a class, nobody is to talk for five minutes. Mrs. Shardle is going to set the timer, and as long as we make it to the five minutes without somebody talking, then we can go back to yellow. However, if we don't make it the full five minutes and somebody decides that they're going to talk, the time restarts. In that next five minutes, if somebody talks again, the time restarts. And it continues on and on and on. Let's take a tour of the room now. So the room literally has not changed. We still have our coloring pages over here, free draw papers, our markers, and um, how to draw books are down there. Moving along, we have our wall of demonstration panels, which nothing's up at the moment. Completed projects will be there. This is a no-no area. This is the cutting board. I do not want anybody touching the cutting board. We got our pencil sharpeners used for regular pencils because they like to eat colored pencils. Moving on, we're going to come around to the sinks. We have sink one and sink two. We have our drying racks in front of the sinks. Trash can on each side of the drying rack. On the counters, we have our paint setups. We also have our crayon bins, glue caddies, glue sticks, our erasers. Um, if I ask somebody to pass out a glue caddy, that would be this guy right here. The whole thing goes to the table. That includes the pencil boxes with the wet glue. Now if I ask somebody to pull out and pass out the pencil boxes and glue sticks, they're going to pass this out right here. All right, so if we keep it moving, we come over to the cubby counter. It is a counter with our cubbies on it. So each class should have its own, I'm sorry, each grade should have its own folder with a class in it. And within each folder, you should have a table folder. Inside each one of these, so if you were in fifth grade, you would have a folder with your class code on it. Inside each folder will be either a blue, green, or purple piece of paper folded in half. This would be for table one. Table two would be green. Purple would be for table three. 
And those live in the folder, which lives in the cubby, which lives on the cubby counter. We also have our light switches and our to-go bag is over here. So over here we have our front table. And on it you have, hmm, on it you have the sign-out sheets, pencils, erasers, markers, rollers, hand sanitizer. Below it is the scrap bin. Um, you do not need to ask me to use the things on the front table. Make sure if you are using the permanent markers that you put scratch paper underneath because they like to bleed through. Um, when you are signing out, make sure that you sign your name and class code or time. The scrap bin is for good pieces of scratch paper, of scrap paper, I'm sorry. I do not want to see coloring pages or free draw papers or tissues in the scrap bin. So we don't go behind the kiln or the kiln table because if the kiln is on, you could burn yourself. Moving around the room, our color wheel is still there. Our demonstration table where all the magic happens. And then we are back to the teacher's desk, which is normally a hot mess, and that we don't need to go behind. Panning over, we are back to the coloring spots. So trash cans, I have one up by my desk. There is also one over by the color wheel. So on the other things to know and frequently asked questions, um, a few things just for you to keep in mind. Your name and class code always go on the edge of the paper, not the center of the paper, um, always the edge. You may use any of the tools on the front table without asking. I just ask that you put scratch paper underneath if you are using the permanent markers, but you do not need to ask me to use a pencil, a ruler, a eraser, or any of that. Uh, there is one coloring page per student per class. You are always to line up in number order if you have it. Always, always, always. I don't want to hear, Mrs. Charnel is in number order. Uh, yes. Please don't tattle unless it's a medical emergency. I do not care if Joe Schmo does not like your fish drawing, and you shouldn't care either. Now, if Joe Schmo is bleeding, I need to know that. Um, ask before you sign, to, sign out to leave the room. Make sure that I acknowledge that you are leaving. My suggestions are to help improve your work. They are never intended to be mean or cruel. I'm trying to make you the best artist you possibly can be. If you are late to class or miss the demo, it is your responsibility to find a student teacher or somebody that you trust at your table to help you get caught up. It is not fair if you miss the 20 minute demonstration at the beginning again that you expect the teacher to reteach it for 20 minutes while the other, your other classmates are working and the teacher can't circulate to help them. So that is your responsibility. Also, if you are here for the demo and then have to leave while we are actually working, you can come in during your recess or at the end of the day. I'm always here and I'd be happy to have you. Um, something I do need to say that is not on there that goes with keep your hands to yourself you are never to touch, mark, or draw on another student's artwork. Candy! I just love candy, as I'm sure you do too. There are a few rules about candy that most of you probably already know, but let's just review. One, don't ask me if you're getting candy that day. If you ask, then you are not getting candy. Two, Candy is not a reward for doing what you were supposed to do anyway. It is a reward for exceptional behaviors, great acts of kindness, for answering questions correctly, or being super helpful. Three, candy is not given out every class or Mrs. Shard will be broke. And four, please don't cry over a Tootsie Roll or Starburst. If there are tears shed, then that means as a class, we're gonna have to mature a little before we can get candy again. So we'll try again later in the school year. And then if it's at the end of the school year, then we'll try again next school year. 
So candy is a great thing, but keep these rules in mind. Well, that was fun. Thanks so much for listening. And stay tuned for more information from me. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.